Hello all, welcome back to our class. What we discussed in previous classes, just a small summary. We discussed about values of trigonometric ratios at some specified angles and we derived them as well as we had discussed about a few set of examples also. So, the next concept is going to be trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. So, what do you mean by trigonometric ratios of complementary angles? What do you mean by complementary angles? Trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. See, trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. Complementary angles are nothing but sum of two angles is equal to 90. Then both of them are said to be complementary angles. Now, let me draw one right triangle. So, this is one right triangle in which this is right angle. Okay. And this angle is supposed to be theta. If this angle is equal to theta, will you be able to guess what is the measure of that angle? Sum of these two angles is equal to obviously 90 because one angle is already 90 degrees. So, if one angle is equal to theta, what would be the other angle? Yes, the other angle is going to be 90 degrees minus theta. Right? Let us name this triangle A, B, C and the lengths of sides are for example, this is Y and this is X and this is R. Right? I am going to find all the trigonometric ratios with respect to acute angle theta. Okay? First, sin theta. What is the definition of sin theta from the triangle? That is side opposite to theta divided by hypotenuse. And second one is cos theta. Cos theta is equal to side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse. And then tan theta which is equal to side opposite to theta divided by side adjacent to theta. And cosecant theta is equal to hypotenuse by side opposite to theta. And secant theta is equal to hypotenuse by side adjacent to theta. And finally, cot theta is equal to side adjacent to theta by side opposite to theta. These are all six trigonometric ratios according to acute angle theta. Now, I am going to find all six trigonometric ratios according to acute angle 90 minus theta. Right? So, let us start with sin. What is sin of 90 degrees minus theta? Sin of 90 degrees minus theta is side opposite to 90 minus theta is x divided by hypotenuse is obviously r. x divided by r is sin of 90 minus theta <coughs> because 90 degrees as well as 90 degrees minus theta both are available in the same triangle. Next, cos of 90 degrees minus theta. So, cos of 90 minus theta is equal to side adjacent to 90 minus theta is going to be y divided by hypotenuse is equal to r. And then tan of 90 degrees minus theta. So, tan of 90 minus theta is equal to side opposite to 90 minus theta by side adjacent to 90 minus theta. So, that is x divided by y and then cosecant of 90 degrees minus theta which is equal to hypotenuse by side opposite to 90 minus theta that is sorry hypotenuse is equal to r so that r divided by x right so which is equal to hypotenuse is r divided by side opposite to 90 minus theta is x and then secant of 90 degrees minus theta. So, secant of 90 minus theta is equal to again hypotenuse by side adjacent to 90 minus theta that is y and finally, you have cot of 90 degrees minus theta. So, cot of 90 minus theta is equal to side adjacent to 90 minus theta that is y divided by opposite to 90 minus theta that is x. See, we defined all trigonometric ratios with respect to angle theta as well as with respect to angle 90 minus theta. Right? Once you observe both the trigonometric ratios, x divided by r, can you identify is that x divided by r available in these trigonometric ratios with respect to theta? Yes, x divided by r is nothing but cos theta. So, instead of x divided by r, can I write cos theta? Yes. So, what does it mean? Sin of 90 degrees minus theta is going to be 
cos theta. Similarly, y divided by r, where this y divided by r is located? Yes, this is y divided by r. So, instead of y divided by r, we can write sin theta. So, that y divided by r is equal to sin theta. Therefore, cos of 90 degrees minus theta is going to be sin theta. Next, x divided by y. Where is x divided by y located? Yes, it is here. Right? x divided by y is for cot theta. So, instead of x divided by y, can I write cot theta? Yes, cot theta. What does it mean? Tan of 90 minus theta is going to be cot theta. And next, r divided by x. Where is this r divided by x located? Yes, this is r divided by x which is equal to secant theta. So, instead of r divided by x, I will write secant theta and r divided by y. Where is that r divided by y? It is here. r divided by y is equal to cosecant theta. So, cosecant theta and finally, y divided by x. Where is that y divided by x? It is tan theta. So, that instead of y by x, I can write tan theta. Now, once you observe about the trigonometric ratios at 90 degrees minus theta as well as theta, right? Sin of 90 degrees minus theta is going to be cos theta and cos of 90 degrees minus theta is going to be sin theta and tan of 90 degrees minus theta is going to be cot theta as well as cot of 90 degrees minus theta is going to be tan theta. Cosecant of 90 minus theta is equal to secant theta and secant of 90 minus theta equal to cosecant theta. See, Trigonometric ratios are converting into their co-ratios, not reciprocals, co-ratios when the angles are theta and 90 minus theta. So, where theta can be any angle, theta and 90 degrees minus theta. So, theta can be any angle there, but it should be an acute angle basically. So, acute angle otherwise 0 also, of course otherwise 90 degrees also, right? Suppose if theta is equal to 30 degrees, then if it is 30, 90 minus 30 is equal to 60. So, 30 and 60 trigonometric ratios are equal to their co-ratios. That's what we actually identified in our tabular form also, right? So, this is about trigonometric ratios of complementary angles. So, you will have to remember this. What is sine of 90 minus theta? Sine will be converted into cosine. It is nothing but cos. Of course, cos will be converted in terms of sine and tan will be converted into cotan, it is cot and cot will be converted as tan as well as cosecant will be converted into secant and secant will be converted into cosecant, right? So, I will just summarize this trigonometric ratios of complementary angles, okay? So, here what ratio converting into other ratio, okay? So, they are like sin will be converted into cos and cos will be converted into sin and tan will be converted into cot and cot will be converted into tan and cosecant will be converted into secant and secant will be converted into cosecant only at only at 90 degrees minus theta right so, because theta and 90 minus theta are said to be complementary angles, that is why sin will be converted in terms of cos and cos will be converted in terms of sin and tan will be converted in terms of cot and cot will be converted in terms of tan and cosecant will be converted in terms of secant and secant will be converted in terms of cosecant, right? Hope you understand. We will have a few set of examples and we will try to understand. For example, you are given a problem that sin 12 degrees divided by cos 78 degrees is equal to how much? Suppose you are given a problem in terms of 12 degrees as well as 78 degrees, but you remember one thing, we know about 0, 30, 45, 60 and 90 degrees only and these 12 degrees and 78 degrees are not the angles, one of those angles. Then we cannot directly find the value of sin 12 as well as cos 78 from our table then you will have to think in such a way that these angles are complementary to which angle? Got my point? So, 12 degrees to complementary to which angle? 12 plus how much is equal to 90 degrees? Yes, 12 plus 78 is equal to 90. And you do not have to think much because that 78 is right in the denominator. Okay? So, you will have to understand one thing here. Sin 12 degrees divided by cos 78 
out of these two numerator as well as denominator try to convert one of them please do not convert both of them if you convert both of them you will be creating one more problem you will not be solving the problem you are creating one more problem that is why you will have to convert one of the ratios like the numerator or the denominator of the ratio for example i am going to convert sin 12 degrees i know that sin theta is equal to cos of 90 degrees minus theta correct now put theta is equal to 12 degrees then it is going to be sin 12 degrees is equal to cos of 90 degrees minus 12 degrees what is 90 minus 12 which is equal to 78 so that sin 12 degrees is equal to cos 72 degrees right now instead of sin 12 you write cos 72 then it is going to be cos 72 divided sorry cos 78 Divided by this is seventy eight, right? Because ninety minus twelve is equal to seventy eight. Divided by cos seventy eight. Cos seventy eight by cos seventy eight is equal to how much? Is going to be one. So that way we can easily figure out the values of trigonometric ratios at these kind of uneven angles. Uneven angles are nothing but which are not available in our table. Right, zero, thirty, forty-five, sixty, and ninety. Then definitely you will have to think always towards the complementary angles. Always towards the complementary angles. If that angle is an unknown angle, right? For example, um, I will explain one more problem in this complementary angles. So that is, right? Uh, next example two. Find the value of sine square ten degrees. Plus sine square eighty degrees divided by secant square ten degrees minus um, like instead of taking secant, I I will take cos, so it would be easier for you to understand, for you to identify also. So sine square ten degrees plus sine square eighty degrees divided by Cos square fifteen degrees plus cos square seventy five degrees. See ten degrees, eighty degrees, fifteen degrees, and seventy five degrees. No angle is available in our table. So definitely you will have to think in such a way that what, how, e, how are these angles related with the complementary angles? Okay. Now sine square ten degrees can be written as Sine ten degrees whole square plus sine square eighty degrees is sine eighty degrees whole square whole divided by cos square fifteen degrees is cos fifteen degrees whole square plus cos square seventy five is cos seventy five degrees whole square. You understand? Now see sine ten degrees whole square plus sine eighty degrees whole square. What is the value of sine ten? Yes, ten degrees is complementary to eighty degrees. So that sine ten degrees is obviously is equal to cos eighty degrees. So in the place of sine ten, I will write cos eighty. So cos eighty degrees whole square plus already there is one angle that is sine eighty degrees whole square divided by same. In the denominator, you change one of them. As I told you earlier, please do not change both of them. If you change both of them, you will be creating one more problem. Right, so cos fifteen, fifteen degrees is complementary to seventy five degrees, and sine is the core ratio to cos. So you can write cos fifteen degrees is equal to sine seventy five degrees whole square plus it is already cos seventy five degrees whole square. Okay, now cos eighty degrees whole square can be written as cos square eighty degrees plus sine eighty degrees can be written as Sine square eighty degrees whole divided by sine seventy five degrees is nothing but sine square seventy five degrees plus cos seventy five degrees is going to be cos square seventy five degrees. In fact, we have an identity in terms of sine and cos. That identity is going to be sine square theta plus cos square theta is going to be one. We will be discussing after this. So by using sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. Theta can be any angle, but it should be a same angle. See here, the numerator is in the form of cos square 
theta plus sin square theta where theta is equal to 80 degrees that is in the form of sin square theta plus cos square theta right so we write one for the numerator coming to the denominator sin square 75 plus cos square 75 that is where theta is equal to 75 degrees so sin square theta plus cos square theta obviously we can write one one divided by one is equal to one see how easy uh, to get the value of sin square 10 plus sin square 80 by cos square 15 plus cos square 75 so this way we can easily figure out the values of trigonometric ratios where theta is any one of the angles which is uneven angle means one which is not available in our trigonometric table right so this is about trigonometric values of complementary angles so coming to the next level of this trigonometric ratios or introduction to trigonometry that is we are going to establish some relations between trigonometric ratios so what are those relations we are going to establish they are let us consider a right angle triangle in this right angle triangle let this angle be 90 degrees and take one of the complement one of these two angles acute angles is equal to theta for example this angle is going to be theta and for example this is triangle a b c and this is y and this is x and this is r correct so by pythagoras theorem we can understand one thing that by pythagoras theorem x square plus y square is equal to r square side square plus side square is equal to hypotenuse square so this is the standard result for any right angled triangle so now x y r there are totally three unknowns right i am going to figure out this trigonometric ratios of this particular triangle by dividing this entire equation by one 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 variable since there are three variables i am going to find out this value by dividing first one variable x and then one variable y and then one variable one so for that i will do one thing equal to rhs equal to r square is there so that is why i will divide x square plus y square is equal to r square by r square first okay so first i am going to divide every single term of the equation by r square then it is going to be x square by r square plus y square by r square is equal to r square divided by r square x square by r square can be written as x divided by r whole square y square by r square can be written as y divided by r whole square is equal to r square by r square is going to be 1 now just tell me what is this x by r and y by r according to angle theta x divided by r what is this x for this theta that is side adjacent to theta and r is going to be the hypotenuse side adjacent to theta by hypotenuse is equal to cos theta right so x by r is equal to cos theta square is there so whole square plus y divided by r what is y according to this angle theta that is side opposite to theta and what is this r hypotenuse so side opposite to theta by hypotenuse is the definition for sin theta right y by r is equal to sin theta we can write it as whole square is there whole square is equal to 1 now we are going to obtain one relation between sin and cos what is that cos theta whole square is equal to cos square theta sin theta whole square is equal to sin square theta which is equal to 1 therefore sin square theta plus cos square theta is going to be 1 this is what called first trigonometric identity you know what do you mean by identity identity means i think you learned it in sixth class or seventh class for example x plus y is equal to 5 this is a mathematical equation is this x plus y is equal to 5 true for all possible values of x and y you cannot say that because if you take x is equal to 1 y is equal to 4 then 1 plus 4 is equal to 5 absolutely fine but 1 and 4 are not only the numbers in our real number system there are infinitely many numbers i just want to put x is equal to 0 y is equal to 100 what is 0 plus 100 0 plus 100 is equal to 100 which is not equal to 5 so x plus y is equal to 5 is a mathematical equation but what is a plus b whole square a plus b whole square is equal to 
a square plus b square plus 2ab right now you take any two numbers for a and b then a plus b whole square always equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab for those particular numbers a and b so a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab is also a mathematical equation but this mathematical equation is true for all possible values of the variables a and b so if a mathematical equation which is true for all possible values of the variables then that mathematical equation can be treated as an identity so this is an identity but x plus y is equal to 5 is not an identity did you get my point so did you understand what is the difference between identity and mathematical equation right see here sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 what is the variable in this theta itself is the variable because theta can be any number so that according to that particular number sin gives one value as well as cos gives one value but sin square theta plus cos square theta is always defined sin theta is always defined cos theta is also always defined so that sin square theta plus cos square theta is also always defined therefore sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 is the first identity first trigonometric identity but you will have to mention here about angle theta also where theta can be any real number means theta can be any number you can put either theta equal to 0 degrees theta equal to 90 45 60 or any angle then sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 is the first identity means the value of sin square theta plus cos square theta gives always 1 so please make a note of it the first trigonometric identity is sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 where theta can be any real number got it okay so here we divided x square plus y square is equal to r square by r square so we got one identity right this is the first trigonometric identity now instead of dividing x square plus y square is equal to r square by r square now choose one of the other variables because we are left with two more they are x as well as y now i am going to divide x square plus y square is equal to r square by other identity or other value that other value can be x square or can be y square that's your wish because we are left with two more values so now i am going to divide x square plus y square is equal to r square by x square okay so then x square by x square plus y square by x square is equal to r square by x square okay x square by x square is going to be 1 plus y square by x square is going to be y by x whole square is equal to r square by x square is going to be r by x whole square got it 1 plus let us see what is this y by x according to this acute angle theta what is the value of y by x see what is y here for theta y is the side opposite to theta and x is the side adjacent to theta so this is the definition for which trigonometric ratio side opposite to theta by side adjacent to theta yes it is tan theta so 1 plus y by x is equal to tan theta square is there so whole square is equal to r divided by x r means the hypotenuse x is the side adjacent to theta so hypotenuse by side adjacent to theta is going to be secant theta so which is equal to secant theta whole square so finally we got the other trigonometric identity which is 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta this is the second trigonometric identity but before we call it as an identity just now we discussed about identity it should be true for all possible values of the variable theta but if you once think logically and just go back to our tabular values tan is undefined as well as secant also undefined at one specified angle will you be able to get it tan 90 is equal to undefined as well as secant 90 is also equal to undefined means if i put theta is equal to 90 degrees then it is going to be 1 plus tan 90 degrees whole square is equal to secant 90 degrees whole square 1 plus 
tan 90 is equal to undefined. What do you mean by undefined? I do not know. That is it. Undefined means we do not know the value. So, just to say that in our mathematical symbol, uh, symbols, we use the symbol undefined. Undefined square is equal to undefined square. See, undefined square is nothing but we do not know. Right? So, we do not know this value as well as we do not know this value. Then, how can you say that they are equal? You cannot say that they are equal because for theta is equal to 90 degrees, tan as well as secant both are undefined. Then, in that particular case, you cannot call this 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta as an identity. But, under one specific restriction condition, we can call this as an identity. Except to this 90 degrees, 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta is always true. But since we are in 10th class, we know only up to 90 degrees, from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. But angle can be anything, right? So that is why I will give you one small idea on this identity. You will be learning in plus 1 plus 2 briefly about this. That is, theta cannot be odd multiple of 90 degrees. Odd multiples of 90 degrees means what? 1 into 90, 3 into 90, 5 into 90, 7 into 90. At any of these specified angles, 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta is not an identity. So, that is why you just remove those angles. Which kind of angles? Odd multiples of 90 degrees. So, odd number general form is 2n plus 1 into 90 degrees is 90, but in our radians, you can write it as pi by 2 radians, where n can be any integer, right? So, theta not equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2, where n belongs to z, then 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta is called an identity. In fact, this is second trigonometric identity. So, please do remember, 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta is second trigonometric identity provided theta cannot be an odd multiple of 90 degrees. Okay? Now, coming to third identity just by dividing, see we divided x square plus y square is equal to r square by r square as well as by x square. Now, let us divide that by y square and then you will be getting some other trigonometric identity. So, what will be that other trigonometric identity? Let us see once. Okay, So, that is this is right angle 90 degrees and this is theta and this is y and this is x. So, I am dividing this by y square. So, then x square by y square plus y square by y square plus is equal to r square divided by y square. x square by y square is going to be x by y whole square plus y square by y square is equal to 1 is equal to r square by y square is r by y whole square. What is this x by y? x divided by y. x is side adjacent to theta, y is equal to side opposite to theta. So, side adjacent to theta by opposite to theta is equal to cot theta. So, can we write it as cot square theta plus 1 which is equal to r divided by y. Hypotenuse by side opposite to theta is going to be cosecant theta. So, we can write it as cosecant square theta. So, finally, what is this identity? 1 plus cot square theta is equal to cosecant square theta. Again, can we call it as an identity? Again, you can find out undefined in one of the angles of theta for cot as well as cosecant that is at cosecant 0 is undefined as well as cot 0 is also undefined. So, except 0 degrees for any other angles, it is an identity, not only except 0 degrees, for any multiple of 180 degrees. So, that you can write it as theta cannot be a multiple of 180 degrees, 180 degrees in radians, that is pi, where n belong to integers. So, these are three trigonometric identities, very much useful and we will discuss them briefly in the next class. Thank you.